Welcome to River Bend. Keeping it real with River Bend. Uh, I'm Terrence. I'm Cody. And uh, my brother's got something that he's been studying on for a little bit, and I'm going to kind of let him just take the lead on it today. Uh, so I'm going to pray us in, and if you would, just pray along with us. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just ask you for your hand today, Lord. Just be upon us. Lord, anoint our words and our hearts, Lord. Let us just speak what you want to be, what, what you want spoken, oh Lord. Lord, we love you, and we just thank you for your mercy and grace, Lord, in the name of Jesus. All right. <clears throat> I guess pressure's on me. Nah, we'll be all right. Uh, so, I've been doing a little bit of studying on uh, Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 13. Just, uh, just kind of felt that there was something to it for me. So, uh, wrote it all down, took notes, did some studying. Really felt I wanted to put it on the podcast today. I uh, just want to thank y'all for watching. Uh, hopefully I can deliver it the way I'm wanting to. Um, it's called, How Strong Is Your Yoke? So, I'm going to get right to it. This will probably be our shortest podcast ever so far. Uh, hopefully, not taking any more longer than 25 minutes. But uh, <clears throat> The title is called, How Strong Is Your Yoke? It's based off of uh, Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 13. Uh, there's more to it, but my main focus on it is uh, chapter 13. Chapter 28, verse 13. So, a yoke is defined by Eastern Bible Dictionary to be fitted on the neck of oxen for the purpose of binding to them traces by which they might draw the plow. It was a curved piece of wood. Essentially, a yoke was a harness used by oxen and other animals to ease the work of hauling a load. It was also meant as a designation of servitude in carrying the burden of a task or mission. Also have yoke means a well-known implement of husbandry frequently used metaphorically for subjection. In Matthew 11 and 29 Jesus said take my yoke upon you. He meant that we are to submit ourselves to him every day in every way. A yoke was made of wood, hand curved, and in ancient culture the word yoked was used to describe submission. So when someone described as being yoked to someone or to something, it was communicating the idea that he or she was in submission to that person or thing. So metaphorically, it's just used as a form of submission. And to me, submission and being trusted in God, like I'm full sold out to you. Like I'm, I'm yoked with you. I'm one with you. I believe in you. I trust in you. I want your will to be done. I want to submit to your will. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want me to do, I want to do it because you want it done. That's pretty much my idea of it um, after reading these three different uh, dictionaries of it, I guess, if you will. So then, uh, <clears throat> so with that being said, yoke is submission to God in everything we do. If we are completely submitted to God or yoked to God, then we are to submit to His will, no matter if we like it at that moment or not. In Jeremiah chapter 28, it's leading up to the captivity that Babylon would take over Judah. And it was because of Judah's lack of obedience to the Lord and the, <clears throat> for her trespasses, they worshipped false gods, they committed adultery, they disobeyed God's law and had refused to hearken to the word of God and truly repent. So God is sending Babylonian Babylon to take them captive where they will ultimately spend 70 years captive and then God will return them. So even in the Lord's wrath, he still gave his people hope. In this process, God uses the prophet Jeremiah to warn the people of Judah. <clears throat> so, 
he's told Judah at this point wear a wooden yoke necklace to symbolize submission to Babylon. So, God's trying to correct them. He's even went as far to say that the king of Babylon is his servant at this point. And he's going to execute the will of God. The will of God right now is for Judah to have correction. And Jeremiah is wearing this yoke necklace and prophesying to people what God's told him. Submit to Babylon. Because if you don't, you stay, you're going to die by the sword, by famine, or pestilence anyway. So submit to the will of God right now, which is for you to go into captivity into Babylon. It's meant as a symbol of being yoked. Jeremiah is yoked right now. He's, he's going to submit to God's will, even if we don't like it, even if it terrifies us. The Lord's will be done. So, <clears throat> in Jeremiah chapter 28, he uh, ends up having a conversation with the prophet Hananiah, which is of Gibeon, in the house of the Lord. Now, I'm not going to go into the full scriptures and read them, because I'll end up reading the whole chapter 28, and it's only like 17 verses, but for time's sake, I won't read all 17 but Hananiah is prophesying falsely. And he's not prophesying the word of God. God has not spoken to Hananiah on this matter. And he's falsely prophesying against God and against what Jeremiah is prophesying. And uh, Jeremiah, or Hananiah pretty much rips off the wooden yoke necklace of Jeremiah. And it also says in the commentary on that part that Jeremiah walked off out of respect for the people who was in his hometown and out of the love for his city. He didn't want to make a scene. He didn't want a conflict with Hananiah, so he walked away. And then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. And uh, <clears throat> verse 13, God says this, Go and tell Hananiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Thou hast broken the yokes of wood, but thou shalt make them yokes of iron. So that's going to be our focus today, an iron yoke, unbreakable yoke. If yoke is symbolic of our submission and our trust in God, we don't want a breakable yoke then. We want an iron one, one that's unbreakable. I was talking to Terrence earlier, we work with steel, not quite iron. But the same applies. When we put something on and it don't fit right, we've got to cut it off. You can cut it into the smallest piece, but you cannot break it. You cannot break that piece of steel. The same goes for iron. No matter how small you make it, it's still going to be a solid piece of iron. It's still going to be a solid piece of metal that cannot be broken. It's solidified. That's how we want our walk with God to be, how our yoke, our submission to God to be. So, so I ask, how strong is your yoke? How truly submitted are you to the will of God? Are you sold out? What resembles a wooden, breakable yoke? And what resembles an iron, unbreakable yoke? <clears throat> In today's world. I'll answer that question with another question. What situation, problems, hurts, habits, hang-ups... Are you making bigger than God? So often we let our problems get bigger than the answer to our problems. Our relationships, our joy, and our job, and our income, addiction, depression, sickness. Whether it be debt or a loss of a loved one, a sickness, the Lord is the answer to everything. When you feel low and lost, Hopeless, there is a God waiting to intervene that knows you by name, knows the number of hairs on your head, willing and able to break you from those chains, that, that bondage, that loss, that sickness, that grieving. But a lot of times we won't see past that giant obstacle, or Goliath if you will. But I don't care how big your Goliath is, God's going to be bigger than that Goliath every day. That's all of my notes. This is the part where I just kind of put my thought into it. We make situations bigger than God. 
we can have something happen or something come up in our life, and we get so focused in that. We put our energy and our time and our, our worry in that, and it overtakes us. I think it could be used as a tool of the enemy, but it's also just the way the world works sometimes. We get so caught up in what's going on, what our problem is, and then we don't even think about God healing us from it or taking us out of it or even asking Him, just coming to the Lord in prayer. That's breaking our, our, that's a wooden yoke that's being broken. But when you have an iron, it doesn't matter what sickness comes up, what loss, what controversy or adversary comes against you, you go to the Lord in prayer. I, in a way, prayer is your yoke. I believe that if I'm submitted to God, I'm going to come to God for everything, any situation. And I'll be able to come, come to the Lord, and He's going to see me through because He is our counselor. He's everything we need is an answer to every problem. There's nothing bigger than God. There's no length He won't go to. There's no no death He won't reach down to get pull us out because He loves us so much. And it brings me to First Samuel. Before we do that, let's let's look back in uh, Jeremiah. I think. I mean, if you'll look, Jeremiah was always trying to be in the will of the Lord. Mm -hmm. He stayed in the will of the Lord. So that's why the Lord trusted him to do all this. That's why the Lord trusted to put the yoke upon him and not somebody else. It's because he stayed connected to the Lord. You know, even when Hananiah was speaking false prophet to everybody, every, you know, there was probably all the other uh, Israelites was probably like, you know, they probably believed Hananiah, you know, but the, but Jeremiah stayed he stayed connected, and that's, I, and I think that's a big part of uh, of of being yoked with the Lord, is staying connected and staying into the will of the Lord. Right. You know, uh, you said praying. You know, and I think even fasting. Yeah. You know, reading. Yeah. I mean, it it all boils. Yeah, yeah, it all boils down to trusting in the Lord. And being obedient unto the word, you know. But then again, when you're yoked, when you're bonded in the Lord, I mean, you're going to have all them things in your life, too. I mean, you can even take it further than and, that. I mean, there's times where I'm in my head and oh, absolutely. I'm like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do in my life. Like, I feel like podcasting ain't, ain't doing much. Right. And I start thinking on my behalf, like, what am I supposed to do? I'm not good at anything. All things I used to be good at, I can't do no more. Like, right. what am I supposed to do with my life? And then it just hits me all of a sudden, like, I don't have to be the smartest. I don't have to be the most anointed. All I got to do is be available. Available. And it's a process. And just that continuation, even if I seek God out for five minutes every day, if right. I'm getting that supernatural and I seek after the Lord and I cry out to Him, even if it's just five minutes a day, it's more consistency than anything else. And, and you know, I think, too, we should, we, we should hold ourselves accountable because it's like Brother GL said, last, you know, last Sunday. I mean, if all, if all hell is breaking out in your life, mm -hmm. there's got to be a reason for it. So, the Israelites, they're about to go through something. Jeremiah is their preacher in the boat for them. You know what I mean? Like, if you look at it, Jeremiah is the preacher in the boat telling them, hey, you're about to go into this. You might as well get ready. You, you, you've did all this stuff. You, you haven't stayed in the will of the Lord. You, you've wanted to Serve pr false prophets. Right. You know, you wanted to serve Idolatry. Baal and all this. But now he's give, He's going to make it happen for you. Right. He's going to. You're. He. He's putting that yoke because you're going to be a similar. Because, I mean, it said in here where the Lord used Nebuchadnezzar as his servant. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, man, sometimes we're our own worst enemies. Sure. And, and why things we we question why ain't this working out for me why ain't that working out for me why why am i not connected to the lord because well, we what broke yoke. your yoke yeah. 
What broke your yoke? Was you not fasting? Was you not praying? Where was you not submitted into the Lord? Where was you being disobedient unto the Lord? Where was you not fully submitted in the Lord? You know, and uh, man, I think I think you're on to really something really good, man, for real, bro. I, uh, but just like that, that's a good example. I mean, like, I'm going to use this guy I know. I won't say his name, but bless his heart, he's ate up with cancer right now. And is given six months to live at this very moment. And I'm talking to him, and you know, I'm telling him, like, you should come to church sometime. He tells me, ain't no use in me going to church. What's the point of it? it ain't going to help me. It ain't going to help me physically. It right. might help me mentally, but it ain't going to help me. I'm screwed. I'm dying. That's a prime example of what I mean right there by looking... Making your problem bigger than the solution. Yeah. God is probably standing behind that Goliath in your life, just waiting to put. What a testimony it'd be that God just heals him with that cancer. What a testimony that would be. Stage right four. Stage four. Think about that. But he won't even let God get the chance to because he won't hearken to it. Just like they're not hearkening to his word, they're not hearkening to the Babylonian captivity. It's not. He's, he's sending them into captivity because they've been disobedient. They're not truly repenting. They're not listening to his word. So he's sending them to Babylon for correction. Right. And was it First Timothy or Second Timothy 3.16? Mm. It says the word is for reproof and correction. Right. This is what you're doing wrong. This is how you fix it. He's trying to reproof them and correct them all through this book. And they're not listening. So he's sending them there to correct them. Yes, it seems like punishment, and they can probably look at it as that. A lot of, until up to this point, nobody really believes Jeremiah. They refuse to believe Jeremiah. They won't listen to him. Right. Or maybe they believe it deep down, but they're just so <clears> focused <throat> on their what they got going on, and it's being bigger than God. It's actually a, a reverse of Exodus, if you think about it. It's like a reverse Exodus. The same God that pulled them from the land of Egypt and made them free is now taking them back into captivity. Because of their disobedience. Mm -hmm. Because of their not submitting unto His will. Right. They're wanting to be in their own will. I mean, man, the children of Israel, they've they, they seen more miracles, signs, and wonders than I think anybody will ever see. I mean, it's like, what else does the Lord have to do to you to get you to understand all you have to do it's come into connection with the Lord and stay connected with Him and stay yoked mm -hmm. with Him. And, and I mean, you'll have everything you ever need. And Sister Maria, my mother-in-law, she was telling me last night, I brought this to her, and uh, was kind of getting her insight on it. She was saying that the the yoke of the Lord is, is light, too. It's not yeah. asking for a whole lot. No, it's not. And But anyway, like I'm going to use First Samuel... Chapter 30, verse 6, for an example of how you make problems bigger than the answer. Right. I'm going to use David. So, what it is, is pretty much David has not been king yet. He's running around with his men, doing all these wars. and He returns to their village, I guess you could say, and all their children and their wives are gone, and their village is burned. And it says in verse 6, And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him. His men, his, his army, his people that were riding with him, spoke of stoning him. Because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. In verse 7, And David said to Abathar, the priest of the uh, Himalachicks, I don't know, pray, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abathar brought him, brought thither the ephod and to David, and David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. So, perfect example. 
not even just men, are looking at the problem bigger than the answer. David encouraged himself, but he knew where the source of encouragement was. He went to God for counsel. He went to God because his, he's yoked. He is in submission. He knows that God has got his back. He knows that he is chosen and anointed by God, and he's, he's realizing that. He knows the truth. He knows that his God is for him. So while everybody else is, I'm going to go over here and we're going to kill this dude. He's done led us this far. And we ain't getting nothing done. Our wives have been taken away. Mm -hmm. Our kids. And they done burned our tents and our village. And it's his fault. They're making the problem bigger than the answer. All that time, they're doing all that. They're saying all that. They're over there scheming how to kill David because he's done this to him. He's over there getting inquiry from the Lord. He's over there. He's yoked. He's in submission. Lord, what do you want me to do? Can I pursue them? Is it your will for me to pursue them? Right. And God says, go, and you will recover all. God, because he had he had trust in the Lord. Yes, I mean the same Lord that let him overcome Goliath mm -hmm. and kill Goliath. I mean he was a young he was still a boy. Yeah. He was a young man. So if he was if the Lord was with him then, if he was yoked with the Lord then, then why wouldn't the Lord let him overcome right. and, and take over? I, I I think it's it all boils down to like. How strong is your yoke with the Lord? How strong is your connection with Him? Mm -hmm. All right, can you face your problems head on and overtake them? Will you trust in the Lord to let you overcome them? It's faith over feeling. It's faith over sight. Yeah, absolutely. There's times at this church we are blessed. I don't know when the last time I came to church and not felt the presence of God in oh, worship man. service. It's every service. Every but really? Service. That's a privilege. We don't right. have to feel the... Well, really, it's going to be a good day whenever we don't feel anything, but we know in our heart by faith right. the truth. And right. the truth has set us free. The yoke that we're under has set us free. We have a peace. I was telling Sister Maria last night, the greatest thing, three greatest things in my life, Holy Ghost, getting filled with the Holy Ghost, number one, getting the peace of the Lord, number two, Marrying my wife, number three. Sorry, baby. But peace, the peace you get from being yoked to God. Mm -hmm. To delighten yourself in the Lord. And the peace is indescribable. I was in this, I was living however I was living, and I was in chaos 24-7. And as soon as I stepped into this world, into this, seeking after God, peace came on me that I never experienced before. I can say for the first time in my life that I had peace of mind. And I had peace on the inside. There's peace in me. I am at peace with everything in my life. And that's because I've let my, I've allowed myself to be submitted and yoked to the Lord. Right. And that's the greatest feeling in the world sometimes. Just looking back and just marveling how good this life is. How good it is to be yoked to the Lord. How good it is to be connected to God. It's been the best thing that could ever happen to me. And I don't think I could ever leave. I could never leave this. Knowing what I know, feeling what I felt, and having the the serenity and the peace that I've had, how could you ever leave this life? It's hard to walk away from something that's real. So, you know, it's just truth. It's just it, knowledge. It is. It's knowing that God is for you. And, and you know, going back to the guy that has the cancer, bro, you know, he says all that because he don't have a true revelation of who the Lord is, man. Like, he don't know the Lord like we know. Right. You know, if the Lord can take you from every day, bro, drinking nonstop. I mean, you would rather drink than eat. Mm -hmm. If the Lord can take you away from that, what makes you, what makes you? Anyone think that the Lord can't heal them from a from cancer? There's nothing. To, I mean, the Lord told a lame man, "Rise up and walk." Yep. He he opened the eyes of a blind man. He healed the leprosy. Uh, I mean, if the Lord can do all this, why can't He speak into your life and make cancer go away from you? But it's trusting in the Lord. It's being obedient unto the Lord. It's knowing the true revelation of who Jesus Christ truly is. I've talked to somebody you know? else before. 
having an encounter with the Lord. That has a uh, problem with addiction, like with alcohol, just like I did. So I try to talk to him, and you know, I said, like, "You try going to church, getting to know the Lord." It's like, man, I went to church. I was a freshman in high school to like three years ago. Didn't do nothing. I said, "Well, was you going to church or was you in church?" He's like, "What?" I was like, "Did did you know God?" Said, yeah. I said, "Do do you?" Know God so much, you know the characteristics of God? You know what He thinks of you? You know how much He loves you? Do you know that? He couldn't answer me. When God doesn't give us what what we want right then, we go to other resources Mm -hmm. to try to get it done. We do. In reality, we need to wait on the Lord. Because even if it doesn't come when you want it to, when it does come, it's going to be in perfect timing. Oh, absolutely. Man, it's all about waiting and trusting in the Lord, man. It's this life. We make this life complicated. We make this life more complicated than what it truly is. If we would just submit ourselves to the will of the Lord. All right, Lord. I'm acting like a big dummy. I'll let things go into this old noggin here. And I'll let it ruin everything because you're things, making, things you're is that not. Than God. Yeah, things not going the way I want. Why ain't I able to do this? Why can't I be up there doing that? Why is he getting to do so much more than me? But what? But what I've learned to realize: What are you doing? How much time are you putting into this and that? You know, it's also it's, it's also important to not be performance based right. either so we do this daily bread you know try to read the bible in a year <laughs> y'all I'm like a month and a half behind but I've gotten out of the mindset where I have to do it right like it's performance based the best way to be yoked and for me just is me as Virgil says pretty much breaking it down in a nutshell the thing I've learned is for me the best way for me to get yoked, to be submitted, to be connected, is do not be performance-based, but have a one-on-one relationship with God. Do not, if Brother Terrence is over there, he's probably, him and a couple other guys are the biggest worshipers in the church. He's up there, he's praising, he's dancing, he's jumping, he's worshiping the Lord. I used to look at him and be like, Phew. I'm not doing so good because I don't do all that. You know, I lift my hands up in my seat and I pray while they're singing and I feel just as much as he feels because I know what I'm there for. I have a one-on-one relationship with God. It's me and him. And with that comes order, comes everything else, but it's between you and him. Mm -hmm. Get to know the Lord. Get to want to be submitted to Him. Not because you have to. Not because the Word says to. or Because you have to to get this and get that. But after a while, you want to be submitted to the Lord. You, you want, want to, His yeah. will to be done. Because this life, it is harder than we make it. It's a lot easier than we make it. I'm sorry. Right. Uh, it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Is living this life. And I don't know if this, I hope this went well for y'all. I'm going to close it here. Uh, that's all I got. But It's just being yoked, being submitted, just trusting in God, no matter the situation. And there can be some tough situations where it's going to be hard for you to look up and, and look to God for it because you're just overwhelmed with hopelessness and loss and pain and grief and all of this stuff. It's going to be hard sometimes to face that. But That's when we got to be like David and encourage ourselves in the Lord. Yep. You know. Yep. Let him comfort us in all things. He is our comforter. He is our, our shield, our protector. He is our everything that we need to live this life. And he really, he's for us. He wants us to make it to heaven just as much as we want to get there. Probably more. Right. It says in the Word, it's not His will for all of us to perish. Mm-mm. It's but to he, have everlasting life. 
God's for you. He loves you. He wants you to make it. He wants to be there for you. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants you to be yoked. So if you don't know the Lord, maybe seek to know Him. I promise you, if you just look for Him, He'll find you. You won't have to look very long. Right. He's been waiting for it. Mm -hmm. That's all I got, brother. Uh, love y'all. Appreciate everybody that watches. Even if it just helps one person, it's worth it. Absolutely. Just thankful we get to do this. Just hope y'all like it. Continue to watch and don't give up on us. I know we go a long time without <laughs> consistency, but We'll get there. We appreciate it. We'll get there. And we might try to, you know, take the podcast a little different from time to time. But, uh, man, I love doing it. I would like to get more consistent with it. Yeah. It's like, it's just like, it's almost like, it's like, man, where do you spend all your time at? You know, <laughs> but we love y'all and we're so thankful for y'all watching the podcast um, right now. You want to pray out or you want me to pray out, bro? Yeah, I'll pray out. All right. <clears throat> Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for every breath that we have, God. We're so thankful, Lord, that you seek a relationship with us, God, that you, that we can be able to seek to be yoked to you, God, that you want that just as much as we do, Lord, that you'll guide us, that you'll lead us, that you'll be the potter and we'll be the clay, Lord, and that your will be done and not ours, God. For you are the almighty God perfect Lord, the creator of heaven and earth that knows all. And in the end, God, I want your will to be done. I pray, Lord, that you bless anybody that's watched this podcast. I pray that you have your hand over us as we continue to go forward. I pray, God, that we're able to take this, Lord, and apply it in our life and remember this next time a struggle comes up. Next time something comes up that we can't seem to get past, that we look to you. And uh, just pray that you just Bless everybody, Lord, that watches this. Everybody at this church. I pray, Lord, for revival of this church. It just continues to grow, Lord. And the Spirit gets poured out, God. And I just, I give all praise to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen.